Hello and welcome to Industry Spotlight with Creative First. Our guest today is Nitin Tej Ahoja, Chief Executive Officer, Producers Guild of India. Nitin's career spans various leadership roles in organizations such as Star Sports, Phonographic Performance Limited and World Space Satellite Radio. He has also written scripts for various television shows and documentaries. In 2009, he founded Box Office India, India's premier film trade weekly. He also founded the Moving Pictures film production banner and produced films such as Sahib BV Gangster Returns, Bullet Raja, Revolver Rani, Zapat Lela, Sara Lota and Kahani. As the CEO of the Producers Guild of India, his responsibilities include focusing on policy matters, copyright protection, government regulations, taxation, production incentives available nationally and internationally, cinema, tourism, international co-production treaties and exchange programs. Nitin, welcome to this discussion. Thanks, Lord, and Thank you for having me here. And I must say I'm a huge fan of what you and the team are doing at Creative First. And I eagerly look forward to your newsletter hitting my inbox every Friday. So it's truly a pleasure being here. Thank you, Nitin. In your view, how has the Indian film, television, new media production sector evolved over the past decade and what factors have driven these changes? So, Luita, as you know, the last decade, the most important and consequential event has been the coronavirus pandemic that obviously hit the entire world, including India. And that was a hugely disruptive event and also acted as a huge catalyst and accelerator for trends which were already underway. The most uh, important one being the shift to streaming that happened in India as it did all across the world. Now, some of the shift obviously has happened at the expense of your regular broadcast television. But given the huge size of a market, television still remains a very important medium, uh, especially for producers. Uh, on the theatrical side, it's been more or less a studio of the same, where you've seen the rapid growth of multiplexes, the decline of single screens. And as a result, we still actually are at a lower theatre count than we were a decade ago, which I think is a sign of concern. And I think the, the also one more huge trend of the last five years or so has been one of consolidation. And this has been consistently happening all across, whether theatrical or streaming or television, and still underway, as you know. So it will be interesting to see how that pans out. Our media and entertainment sector has always had a unique identity. How do you think right. the increasing global exchange of content ideas is influencing Indian filmmakers and content creators? Yeah, I think it's uh, influencing not just the filmmakers, it's more importantly influencing the consumer who now have access to you know content, the best of content from all over the world. Whoever thought you know, that South Korean, South Korean shows would be number one in India or a Spanish money heist for that matter. So that's definitely made you know Indian filmmakers clean up the act you know, raise the socks, so to speak, and become more relevant to the current uh, audience tastes. Uh, besides that, I think technology has changed for the better. The VFX has changed. So you see a far more polished product now than it was maybe 10, 15 years back. I think there's also been subtle changes in our content itself. Uh, like you remember, Indian films typically always had five, six songs as a given. Now you see far fewer films, you know, with more than two, three songs, if at all. And I think to an extent, uh, we really should not hanker for change for the heck of it. And if you look at the box office of last year, the four monster hits we had, you know, Patan, Jawan, Animal, Gazer 2. Now, they are very well-made films, but at heart, they still are, you know, very quintessentially Indian stories. The, the big the big budget, big star films of the 80s, 90s. And I think there's nothing wrong in it. You know, there's no point just being a Me Too Hollywood because there's enough of Hollywood to go around anyway. So I think the challenge for uh, Indian filmmakers is to have a, a world-class product, which still is Indian at heart. So, or in other words, you know, old wine and new bottle. How do you assess the current landscape of production and tax incentives in India for filmmakers and content producers? What changes or enhancements could you suggest to make India an attractive destination for both domestic and international productions? As you know, uh, pretty much every Indian state, or at least more than half the Indian states now, offer a incentive policy. And to be brutally honest, I think it's a bit of a mixed bag there, where the policies look pretty good on paper, but very often, and unfortunately, this has been more of a recent phenomena that execution, timeliness of getting grants, has become an issue for our producers. So that is something that we definitely need to be looked at. The more encouraging story is what's happening at the federal level. 
uh, as you know, in 2022, uh, India unveiled a federal incentive, which was, as we all knew, a great initial start, but not enough. And here I must commend MPA and especially you and uh, Uday personally, because I know you guys did a lot to make the government realize that, you know, two and a half crores, three crores, not enough for to attract your big budget Hollywood productions in-house. And uh, lately, the sum has been high, hugely up to 30 crores per film, which I think is a huge, huge incentive. But for us to really, uh, you know, achieve what it tends to do, we need to see a ground level execution too. And I've seen this in every state, every policymaker that we meet, the intent at the top is always very genuine, very sincere. But, you know, when it comes to, let's say, the constable at ground level or the forest officer, at, forest officer when he's shooting at forest, that's where the bottlenecks come in. So that's something I think everyone needs to look at for us to really reap the benefits of the great incentive scheme we do have now. What is the impact of the Cinematograph Amendment Act of 2023 on the theatrical business? I think it is a huge, huge uh, positive and uh, greatly ups the penalty for piracy. More importantly, actually brings internet piracy into the whole ambit of things, which was missing when it was originally enacted in 1952. And uh, one more thing we welcome is, you know, the broadening of the certificate categories from the initial three that were there. What is also welcome is uh, the perpetual validity of the certificates. The only issue we really had when the initial draft was floated was uh, the contentious section 6.1, which could have potentially allowed the central government to have films reassessed. And we are glad that the central government actually dropped it in the final draft. So I think it's a very, very positive bill and we all for it. Act all, and we all for it. International co-productions offer a unique opportunity for cultural exchange and can open up new markets for Indian content. What are your views on the current state and future potential of international co-productions for the industry? And are there any specific countries or regions you are seeing as strategic partners? It's true that this, uh, the potential is huge, but I think it's a pretty different scenario here than it's, say, for you know, your traditional co-production between, let's say, US, UK, or a UK, Australia, or a pan-European co-production. Uh, you know, where there, there's a common culture, language offered is the same. So many countries can pitch in to make a film which is going to resonate all across. I think the Indian market is so unique in its, not only its language, but also its cinematic grammar texture that very often films that we make for our market may not resonate internationally and vice versa. So if you look at films like Slumdog Millionaire, Lion, Rajini Express, now they may have an Indian connect to it, but they obviously do better abroad than they do over here. And the same could be true for our blockbusters that we make over here. So I see a huge potential for collaboration, but that will be more in terms of, let's say a foreign partner offering technical or uh, financial support to Indian partner over here or the other way around rather than we actually making films together which are going to do as well in UK as in India. And again, there's nothing wrong in it. I don't think we should lose out on what makes our industry so unique. At the same time, we obviously should make efforts to make our films travel far and wide and attract the bona fide Western audience, so to speak. And uh, to your second point, which countries are we looking to partner with? I would say anyone who wants to partner with us and makes it worth our while. Uh, in the last decade or so, Indian filmmakers have been shooting in places that, you know, were pretty much unheard of from a filming big point of view. Uh, places like Bulgaria, Georgia, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, or Serbia. So, uh, in the immortal words of Cuba Gooding Jr. and Jerry Maguire, show us the money and we are here, we'll, be there. we'll, we'll come there. Tell us about some of the strategic partnerships you have with possibly states where you want to uh, promote productions for your your producers. Indian states or international? Oh, basically, countries. I'm referring to the recent one, the New Jersey, and you know those yeah, kind of. No, we do have we do have collaborative partnerships with. In fact, we have with Spain, uh, the country of Spain, the Spanish Film Commission, uh, with New Jersey, uh, with backed in UK, uh, with LA. So these are you know uh, partnerships and. Uh, treaties of cooperation, where they offer to support our filmmakers when they shoot over there and vice versa. We are, I think it's a great platform for filmmakers to have access to the right information, the right contacts, uh, right facilities. And we look at, you know, furthering these partnerships as we go along and have more partners uh, on board soon. 
And what is the difference between, uh, you know, in terms of effectiveness between having such partnerships and co-production treaties that are already in place between India and other countries? It definitely helps. Uh, I think uh, to begin with, if you want to uh, qualify for the Federal Indian Incentive, which is very attractive now, I think you have to be as a part of that co-production under the co-production treaty framework. So that obviously is important. I think, but more than that, uh, from a practical shooting point of view, I think the industry to industry contact is much more relevant and important. You know, which is the right right line producer to shoot with, where the best source for equipment. I think these are practical information that producers here need before they go out and explore a foreign territory. Looking forward, what are your predictions for the future of film, television, new media production in India? How should industry stakeholders prepare to navigate the upcoming challenges? Predictions for the future, I think, are very difficult to make in this business, as you know, because we always start a quarter thinking, okay, these are going to be the priority areas for the coming quarter. And by the time the quarter is over, you have different priorities altogether, even though the previous ones haven't been resolved yet. But I think the most critical phase that we're going to be seeing very unfold very, very shortly is to see how this whole consolidation that's happening in the Indian macro level pans out at the media, in the media entertainment sector, because that will obviously have many repercussions. And I think it's also a pretty strange time for the Indian film industry, despite having, you know, four of the biggest uh, hits last year, because they are, the whole predictability of the box office is gone. So if a film does well, it does really well. And if it crashes, it crashes, unfortunately, really poorly. There were certainties that the market used to have, that, you know, if you make a film with such and such actor in this genre, this is the kind of business you can expect to do at the bare minimum. That doesn't happen anymore. So there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, feeling the water, so to speak. But if you look at the overall India story, you know, the growing Indian economy, the growing Indian middle class, 5G will be again a game changer. I think there'll always be the overall India story looks very positive. It's just a question of filmmakers being nimble enough to adapt to whatever the market may throw up. Considering the regulatory landscape, what policy changes do you believe are necessary to further support the growth and international competitiveness of India's media and entertainment sector? I think the most important policy initiative that we need is you know, basically just to have uh, a soft touch regulation and the freedom to you know, tell our stories the best way possible because that is ultimately what all filmmaking is all about. You know, telling a story and hope to attract the biggest audience possible. And the less restraints you put on it, the better it is going to be. And, uh, you know, very often we hear about level playing fields, etc., etc. And my only humble submission to everyone in power would be, you know, like level playing field should mean a lagging sector being raised to the level of the one which is doing well, rather than pulling down everyone to a lowest common denominator. Thank you so much, Nitin, for this insightful conversation and uh, you know we wish you all the best for the year thank you for that thank you for having me